Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Welcome back, Rocket State Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been laughing up in here. This is episode 10. Sean comes back. What's Sean up, Earl. buddy? How you doing, bud? How are you? Good, good, good. Last time we left off, I said we were taking a piss. Yeah. Well, after that, we actually just l- went home. So mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> now it's another day, and you're back, and we're going to yes, continue sir. off what we've been talking about Yeah, because it's mind-blowing. Let's uh, recap of what we were talking about last episode. Okay. So a lot of what we talked about last time, frequency, vibration, human interaction, color spectrum, big bounce theory. Um, damn, what else was there? There's uh, so many things. God, I'm sorry. That was that was that was a it was in depth conversation. It was very in depth, and I want to say a lot of it is theory. Yet there's a lot of proven scientific facts behind it. So take what you will with yes. it all. I will say I vibe with most of it, and actually have been. Um, pretty informed on a lot of the theories. So I would say I definitely yes. agree on the most part. But I do I am gonna challenge you more on this episode. Yes, please do. That Take I everything with a grain of salt. Like yeah. I said, a lot of unless it is scientifically, you know, scientific I don't want to say fact, but if it's something that can be proven, I typically do the research behind it to prove right. it. If it's theory, then you know it it just is what it is. So take everything with a grain of salt. Um, well, what is science? Science is always being disproven and proven again and That's again. That's the idea. Again. Is that we thought the earth was flat. We thought we should uh, deliver babies after uh, we were working the with of the dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we thought we were the center of the universe. But we also, in the 1800s, thought... Uh, after working with a dead body and not cleaning up, we would go deliver a baby, and that's why a lot of the deaths or baby deaths were pretty high. <laughs> well, there you go. So that's just one thing or a few things you could talk about that yeah, uh, that's just, were proven uh, wrong. Yeah. There, so. like, like I said last time, there's there's no such thing as scientific fact. There's just right. strong theories that have not been disproven. Right. So, you know, there's there's things we could talk about today that, you know, we'll, we'll flip the script. But we talked about wavelength and um, frequency and that kind of thing. So just to dive back into that a little bit, mm-hmm. kind of what we were talking about a few days ago with, like, uh, more human connection as well. Um, wavelength has more to do with just light and sound because, you know, you have – Sound and wavelength are very interchangeable. They're very, uh, they're very connected. As far as harmonics and things like that, sound vibrates at a specific frequency. So, like for example, fun fact: the universe itself, the cosmos, actually vibrates at a frequency of 432 hertz. I heard about this the other yeah. day. I, was, I saw a, uh, a article on that. It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting. Oh no, you sent me that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. So the universe vibrates at a specific frequency, which essentially can be transferred to sound, which is kind of how sound works you you speak at a specific decibel rate that decibel rate is received your ears you know kind of transfer to your brain and understands what it's saying all that kind of stuff but at a certain point frequency is more than just light and sound and all kind of stuff frequency also has to do with energy energy being emitted by you name it it can be a star it can be a person because people do emit energy too um, you typically don't notice that you're emitting energy because you don't really see it being emitted. Mm-hmm. Like from the sun, you see visible light being emitted from the sun, but you don't see us um, like emitting light because you know we don't emit energy in that frequency. We don't emit it in that specific wavelength. We emit light mainly in infrared. So a lot of times, that's why when you see like body heat scanners, people are typically pretty red because right. they they are they're emitting energy and heat in uh, IR. So uh, when it comes to energy and wavelength. It's more than just light and sound and things like that. There's also, like I said, tying back to energy. Um, when it comes down to it, it can be a thing where people can connect via wavelength. Like it's, if you if your brain waves are putting off a specific frequency of energy, then you can connect with specific people that are close to that frequency. It's kind of like an alpha state, bravo state, or not bravo state, I'm sorry, beta state. Um, different frequency states like your wavelength depends on your meditative state and all this kind of stuff because it also depends on your your physical state in life. Like if you're at a survival state, 
you're at a very low state of wavelength. You're at a very, very low frequency. And the more you get up the chain, the more you feel physically secure, emotionally secure, mentally secure, all those kind of things, you have the time and the and the headspace to be able to continue thinking about these things. I want to challenge you there. So how how much research do we have in that and like being able to detect these wavelengths? Because I, I believe you for the most part. However, mm-hmm. because I believe because of the fact that you are the sum of the people you surround yourself with. Yeah, usually absolutely. you are. Um, mm-hmm. If you're poor and you're around poor people, you're poor. If you get wasted on Saturday nights, mm-hmm. you're usually around people getting wasted on absolutely, Saturday nights yeah. and your friends like that. Yeah. So you usually uh, somehow through osmosis, you become the people you surround yourself yeah. with. So I, I believe there's some frequency potential there. But what, what research do we have to prove that? Or so what uh, there are articles um, as far as proof itself goes when mm-hmm. it comes to wavelength. It mainly this kind of gets back into meditation. Mm-hmm. It gets back into a little more theory. If yeah. there's a little more science behind it, I would give you some more science. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, but at a certain point when people emit energy, it really just depends. It has to do with more of the, of the human condition. Like, cause at a, we are bags of meat at, at the end of the day. We are just carbon bodies that have mm-hmm. bone and muscle and tissue and all that kind of stuff. But we also have our soul. We have our consciousness and things like that. And these are what leads us to the capabilities of understanding each other. Because I mean, you have things like bats and dolphins that have sonar and all yeah. that kind of stuff that can communicate, but there's not many animals. I guess you can like um, chimpanzees, apes. They typically they can speak in sign language sometimes. They can yeah. actually like understand what they're what they're saying, but there's not many developed. I want to call us an animal because we are we are an organism. Or organisms. There's not many organisms that have developed system of language as complex as the human language. Right. So when you get back when you get down to it humans are very unique in our sense of the fact that we are one of the few if only if not only organism that has the capability of communicating the way we do between each other so as far as the wavelength goes it typically just depends on where you are in your life in your energy state because let's say you're let's say you're living on the street living in the slums like you're only you're only surviving you're worrying about your Every day, day to day, what am I going to do for dinner? What am I going to do about these bills? I don't want to get kicked out of my place. I don't want to live on the street, all this kind of stuff. It puts you at a low frequency of your brain. Your brain just is focused on, let's let's do this right here. Like kind of what we are talking about. In yeah. You're focused like right here, right now. What are we doing? You don't see very far in the future. And then the more that you start to progress and the more that you actually continue and provide yourself more nourishment, whether it's – emotional or physical or sensual or all sorts of different types of you know nourishment because there's more than one um Mm -hmm. you start to move up in vibration rate you start to move up and it's just has to do with a lot of like dopamine and neuro connectors and neuroreceptors and things like that so uh it's complex answer your direct question i'm not sure got you so it's it's really theory theoretical yeah in many aspects i I believe it though because it just it seems the patterns of life. Mm-hmm. Um, you can you can notice that. Yeah. Um, like we said, people who are surrounded by other people generally mm-hmm. act in very similar ways. Yeah, you typically hang around. So. You typically become and behave like the five most people you spend most time yeah. with. So. So and that's you psychology. Learn, that's yeah. just you know. Yeah. I guess that's more of that's more of a psychological question because you yeah. there are probably ways that you can read and pick up on a brain frequency um whether it's you know putting those little sensors on your forehead and just reading or you know understanding the the emission readout and things like that yeah. but um in what ways could we probably prove this though because I, th- I think about it is like okay maybe there's not enough research on it but we 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 generally believe it mm-hmm. i mean you at least yeah and um in this theory we could probably prove it in many ways where like for love and stuff mm-hmm. pheromones are transferred right yeah is given off by mm-hmm. one. There's a reason behind that. That person finds that other person attractive and things like that. Mm-hmm. But there has to be another reason why, like a lot of times I think attractiveness is, um, they say that it's created as you're growing up, right? Yeah. Because you see like the images on TV yeah. or magazine or you're trained, 
you know, as a person, mm-hmm. like you're a male, you like females, females like males, not all of them, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. you can like whatever you like, but, um, in that aspect, we are trained and then it's just given off the pheromones and we're like, mm-hmm. we think that person's attractive, but there's probably more there where you connect with somebody else on a different level mm-hmm. as friends, where it's not just like, I mean, some people that are friends, they don't even exchange that many words sometimes. Yeah. It's just body language. Yeah. But it's pro- there's probably something else going on there because uh, what if you don't interpret the body language right or like, you know what I mean? Which this all so. ties back to wavelength. This all ties uh-huh. back to where you are individually in your life. Right. <laughs> the hippies <laughs> there we go. were right. It's all about vibrations, man. It's all about vibrations. Okay, so it is proven. This article is talking so about So the uh, article I pulled up is from the uh, scientificamerican.com, mm-hmm. uh-huh. um, and the title of it is The Hippies Were Right. It's All About the Vibrations, Man. It's a new theory of consciousness. Yeah, man. There you go. And about how... Um, hippies are right. You, uh, the different mind states can have your whole body vibrating at a different frequency. There you go. Wow. It also, you know... That's so it's proven. That is interesting. Remember, nothing's ever truly proven. Right. It's just a strong theory a that strong we theory. has not been disproven. Okay. But yeah, a lot of it just it's just when you go throughout your life and you are worrying about specific things, when you have like again for the example, when you get put in a sp- when you get put in a space yeah. where you're not significantly worried about survival and you're not worried about you know, am I going to get kicked out of my house? Like when you have a little bit more headspace to be able to think about things, you realize that as individuals and as people, we have a lot of time on yeah. our hands. Like there's always the phrase life is short because it is life moves very fast. If you're not paying attention, if you're not living every minute of it. But the thing is, is that when you get put in a space where you have more time available to you, you can choose to spend that time the way you want. And what's going to happen is that it's kind of like the theory there. Will Smith once kind of had an interview. He was talking about going skydiving and it was all this kind of stuff. And it's like when you just make a decision, The universe will step out of your way. The universe will create a path for you to embark on. It will make something happen for you as long as you stick to it and stay committed and all this kind of stuff. And with that, with that commitment and with that specificity, there you go, with that specificity comes a specific wavelength of your brain. You're putting off specific energies. And when you meet somebody, you meet people that are similar to you, that have similar interests and things like that. That's where those connections begin because you realize, oh, hey, these people are doing very similar things that I'm doing. They're spending their time the way I spend my time. They're reading books. They're reading articles. They're, you know, adventuring. They're exploring. So it's just that's why people who have very similar interests spend time with someone, so so much time with each other. Right. Because they all are just riding the same wavelength. Now, eventually people will taper off. But yeah, people come and go. I like to say Uh, it really helps when a friend does go in your life. Yeah. What's interesting too is like last year I wasn't, I didn't have you guys around. Yeah. You know? And uh, what you just said there is like, you know, you move around in different frequencies Mm -hmm. and what you're thinking about attracts different people potentially. And uh, yeah, Yeah. and we're talking about some crazy theories. Mm -hmm. I've really always, the start of this whole thing uh, began from like when I would have these crazy talks Mm -hmm. with people very deep, like at 4 a.m. in the morning. Oh, yeah. And stuff like that. And uh, I was just like, why not just get this stuff out? Because yeah, I'm dive, talking, man. yeah, I'm talking about this. We're talking about these crazy theories and ideas and mm-hmm. some are facts and like it, it just flips your way of thinking and challenges it. Going back to that a little bit too, what you're talking about, uh, for example, one example I have is I was running today and what you were talking about time. Mm-hmm. We have uh, time. I think when you get a routine, mm-hmm. your brain, your body, and maybe whatever, however the universe works, mm-hmm. You get so used to it and your days just run like that. But when you challenge yourself and make decisions like skydiving and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, like today I was running um, and I haven't ran in a while and I got lost. Yeah. And what happened was when I got lost, I wasn't going to quit running. So I kept running, but I was going to different places I've never been before. Right. And when I went down this one street, like time slowed down because I was analyzing my environment and getting used to it and getting familiar with it. When I turned around... Uh, and like I thought that was a pretty long street. I turned around like, wow, that wasn't long at all. I just ran. I already ran so long, and then um, I ended up going and trying to get go a whole loop around like <laughs> two main streets, mm-hmm. but I couldn't find another sidewalk. I didn't want to go on the main highway, so I had to turn back <laughs> around. I just went down uh, Hughes Road down all the way. Good I was Lord. running. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, <laughs> I was going out to Madison Boulevard. Okay, I ran from here 
all the way to Hughes Road. Dang, and then I was going down to Hughes track. Road and I was like, okay, I need to find some way to get over back to my place. But it's mm-hmm. pretty much cut off from uh, the train track. Mm-hmm. And so I turned all, all the way back around and that Hughes Road, oh my God, I thought that was so long. But running back, mm-hmm. so, so much less, less time. Yeah. Running back. And it's so much shorter than I thought. And mm-hmm. so it's... It's interesting what your brain and what you just said, mm-hmm. like when you t- make a new decision. That's why you always need to challenge yourself mm-hmm. and do new things. It'll slow your life down a little bit to where you can actually enjoy or realize or see different perspectives and things in life. Because mm-hmm. my God, man, when you get in a routine, I, I hate it. I hate it. Life I, speeds up so fast. Yeah, because I, I mean, there is, you know, there are some times where you have to build a routine. Like for me, for example, I'm in school, so you have to build yeah, a you routine. Ha- you have like, to in order to see some sort of end goal. But once you get to a specific point where you have time available to you, like it's just, what do I want to do with this time? But yeah. like, um, yeah, there's a place for routine. Yeah. But there's also a place for challenging. Yourself. Oh yeah, absolutely. If yeah. you don't do both, your life is just going to be, there is something that crazy. I saw. There's a quote that said, if you're not uncomfortable, you're doing it wrong. That makes sense. I like that. So, so back in the frequencies and yeah. things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, essentially, like, that's, that's, that's kind of the, the topic about, you know, wavelength there. It, it just, there's so much to this specific topic because you have things like, there's different practical applications of it. You have psychology, you have, right. uh, you have narrow medicine, you have things like space flight, you have things like avionics, you have like cars, cars, like there, there's BMW, for example, um, has speakers now in the car itself because a couple things. First off, um, the societal standard is that your your exhaust can only produce up to a certain decibel amount. You can't go like above like 90 decibels. I think it is. It might be a little lower just because um, it's it's around that range. But so your car itself can't be loud. But people that drive cars for the for the fun of driving cars, they love that. They love the roar yeah. of the car itself. So what BMW started doing, they have speakers in the car that pumps in um, artificial engine noise that what? makes it sound like you're driving. Like, but in reality, people outside the car is just like, oh, that's just the car driving. But like, that's that seems ridiculous. There you go. See. They actually pump in. Oh my like, gosh! They actually pulled, pump in auditory. Pulled off on the screen. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, auditory. They pump in artificial engine noise engine to make noises. it seem like they're, you know, they're, they, the the person driving the car is getting that sensation. So that's ridiculous. That's just another application of sound, man. Like wavelength yeah. and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's specifically in the M5. Specifically, okay. that makes sense. They had to do it for Tesla because yeah. the electric cars that were silent. Yeah, they just and had like, the battery. Yeah, and so they would like it's nobody would hear the car coming. Yeah. It would just it could run somebody over and you just and hear go. the tires roll. Yeah, that's it. I almost got hit by a Tesla once. I'm not really? surprised. Was it on autopilot? No. I I I um I got very close to being hit by a Tesla in a parking lot. <laughs> and um and thinking back, looking back, I had like a split second. I feel like if I had walked in front of that car, I could have had that car by the end of that um <laughs> scenario. Yeah. You know, probably <laughs> just do me just do a fair trade, just give me the Tesla and we'll call it a day. That's Man, what I'm saying. You should have went a little but, but I also <laughs> wonder if the if like the, the sensors and that would have stopped the car. Yeah. He was flooring it. He was trying to show off. I mean, so. yeah, those cars are like they're not cars. They're almost AI where they can just sense things in front His of them. His did not now. have autopilot though. It didn't have autopilot. I talked to him later oh. about it. Okay. Go. So maybe, but it's. More I knew the it, person, so. My point is, they're more. Oh, really? <laughs> you knew them. Oh my lord! You definitely know some show, good people. Definitely showing off. If I had not, if I had taken one more step, I would have got hit. But <laughs> tells you what frequency Dylan's on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I yeah, just, like you know. um, that's just that's a big part of it. Like you mm-hmm. have specific frequency and wavelength studies and just things like that. Psychology and engines, a lot of engines, because you know when you have anything with an engine on it, it does that. But um, Music, music is a big, 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 oh, big yeah. part of it. So, um, I'm gonna dive into music for a little bit because, like, there is music itself. There's a couple things I want to touch on. Um, it harmonically puts you back, er, not puts you back. Music harmonically puts you in a different state of mind depending on what kind of music you listen to. Um, whether it's rock and roll or classical music or hip hop or you know 
pop music, whatever type of music it is that you listen to, it'll put you in a different sensation of mood, what, regardless of what you do. Sometimes people are sad, they listen to sad music because it helps them feel emotion. It helps them release those chemicals in their brain that helps them feel the emotion of sad. And then sometimes when people are angry, they listen to heavy metal and just just rock out and just just release that stress. And then you know have you know there's you have sometimes where people are just doing their day to day activities, just kind of almost not even paying attention to the music itself but that background noise helps them focus like um that's that's how i do i study with music all the time because it helps me stay focused with what i'm talking about or what i'm what i'm focusing on but um what's really cool is that there was a recent there was a recent study that was finished and completed that uh that's that said that alzheimer's patients as they start to progress in age there's one thing that what people that were studying them started to notice is that as even though they're forgetting like memories and you know the unfortunate stuff that they were forgetting Mm -hmm. something that they didn't forget was music there was a lot of things yeah a lot of times regardless of how old the memory was of music they would always kind of like pick up the music memory um that's what my grandfather he always remembers he he, he's having some early stages of maybe dementia and alzheimer's but he had some he i I always ask him like grandpa how do you remember some like he tells me these stories in detail like Mm -hmm. you can remember the dude's shirt color and like the type of pants he was wearing and the shoes Mm -hmm. and the setting they're in. And I was like, grandpa, how do you remember all those details? And this is like 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And he was like, there was food present. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, all right, that's awesome, man. I wish, (laughs) I I hope that happens to me. Something picks me up where I'm like, oh, I remember exactly what this looked like. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, that's an article right there. Why memories of music cannot, be lost to Alzheimer's and dementia. Wow. Yeah, That's like just d- different parts of the brain picks it up and remembers it. That makes sense. So, because the rhythm and the patterns and and the different parts of the brain it affects. And 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 uh, studying the brain and like when I was studying how to become smarter in any in just any way possible because I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Uh, just on my own side project, one thing they talked about was learning some type of musical instrument. Yeah. Some type of music thing. Gives you that stimulation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Using different parts of the brain to increase mm-hmm. your intelligence. That's not just like one specific area. Yeah. Um, use as much as your brain as you can. Mm-hmm. I'm still music illiterate, but you know. <laughs> hey, we're all just we're all just music. You know, we're all learning music. But um, another big thing is that music itself, harmonically, has different sounds that it puts out. Mm-hmm. And it, it emits different frequencies. That's why you have sometimes when you hear a song that just sounds like really... Um, disgruntled and just sounds really like mm. it strikes it's the striking a chord is like oh I don't like that that doesn't sound right because a lot of times typically when you hear that kind of music it's not right for you do, depending on what time whatever type of frequency you're on right there um, that makes sense because uh, some of the music you guys were listening to the other day I was just like oh, I don't know <laughs> I was like, eh, I'm not feeling this right now but then yeah. I'll put a song I would listen to and you guys were like nah both of you would You'd be like, eh, change I'm pretty, it. I'm pretty I'm like, pretty like, like you guys music. are pretty like, like it was only a few songs I had on where you're just yeah. like, oh, okay, whatever, Cody. <laughs> but like, like I could tell you guys didn't tell me that, but like, that makes sense. Yeah. So each 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 person's different. You know, everybody yeah. has a, their own taste and their own style, which is what makes us unique, which makes us special because yeah. you know we're not we're not like anybody else. We're not we're all special in our own way in a sense, which is kind of you know it's nice to think about. But um, something that's really interesting is kind of getting into more mathematic and scientific st- statistics about music is that the reason that music is what it is, music stemmed from math um, due to sp- specific frequencies and fractions. Hmm. Like you have harmonics like a, like a violin, not a violin, like a harp. A harp has different length of strings and each string emits a different uh, fraction of a sound could you pull it up dylan please like um uh, fractions in music like there should be there should be a specific like mathematical there's mathematical equations like each individual sound like a like a third or a a sixth there's different um fractions mathematically that's that music emits so apparently there's math in everything yes there's math in absolutely literally everything everything. literally love chocolate Mm -hmm. that's one of some of the ted talks there you go like look at that mm -hmm. those are the different notes saying that like a a c is a total of one Mm -hmm. and a d is eight ninths Uh e being four fifths 
so on and so forth. Yeah, three, yeah. four, two thirds, all that stuff. So you're you also have, talking about like the rhythm and the beat, other yeah. than just the notes itself. Because yeah. like you, you know, you're always counting like measures of four, yeah, or like absolutely. measures of three chords and things like that too. Yeah, so like when you're like talking about like the actual rhythm of the song mm -hmm. and not just necessarily the, the note of the song mm -hmm. or the key of the song, mm -hmm. then yeah, those are definitely cut up into fourths or fifths yeah. or Interesting. depending on how fast the song is. Yeah. Wow. So that's what started to create that the renaissance of music and math and art and science and all that. It's just kind of tying back to what we were just talking about a minute ago. Like the people that were alive during the renaissance, your Da Vinci's, your... Um, I'm blanking. Picasso, or no, Picasso wasn't that. He's no, like, no. He's in like the 1800s. I'm sorry. Um, uh, da Vinci's your. Da Vinci's, Da Vinci's, Da Vinci's. I feel I'm drawing a dang blank. You're good. Don't um, worry about. But don't worry about them. Michelangelo. Plato, there you go. Think Michelangelo, Not Da Vinci. Plato. Well, Plato <laughs> still Plato, uh, Aristotle. You're like, talking about the just that people far. before yeah. modern technology. Okay. When you Michelangelo, have, Raphael, Donatello, all the Ninja go. Turtles. The, nerd, the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot. <laughs> yeah, if you ever you? want to remember the Renaissance people, just remember the Ninja Turtles. There you go. So, wow, I'm going to have to remember that, actually. <laughs> but, uh, oh, but, yeah, like your Plato's and your Aristotle's and your Descartes and your um, Pythagoras and all these kind of things, when you have that time and the space available to make – innovative research your galileos your uh, einsteins your newtons your anybody when you have that headspace available to you to be able to conduct research you can create things that are magic and that's kind of what ties back into music is because like music is one of the more influential things in culture i feel like um because again it it has such a powerful resonance inside of each individual person because you can make something and somebody would absolutely love it and somebody doesn't care for it and you know just all sorts of different things in between and mathematically when you break it down that's why so much of old classic music is still sonically good you have your mozart and your box and all that stuff yeah and and what's interesting is i used to listen to that when i did homework exactly because uh it, it was talking about that a lot of that classical music actually increased your brain waves a little bit mm -hmm. or your brain functions and yeah. it really made me feel Smart. like or at least more focused yeah um it was really weird <laughs> <laughs> so when you get into it it's just mathematics because math is literally in everything fibonacci sequence which we talked about last time yeah. um Math is in music, it's in art, it's in architecture, it's in, you know, it's the human construction. Like, you know, it's crazy. If you look, um, the Vitruvian Man, I think I said that right? The if yeah. Vitruvian Man. Um, is that Leonardo da Vinci's yeah. guy? Where it's like yeah. The you Perfect know, Man wild. and stuff like that. The Fibonacci sequence is in that too. I've heard, yeah, I think I thought that one of the first images of the Fibonacci sequence I've seen was, was around him. Mm -hmm. So That whole yeah. image there, which... That ties into something completely different, what I would really like to talk to. Um, it's not it's not theory. It's not math. It's, it's not real. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean. What is it? At a certain Propose point. Propose it. You're Sean Heflin's theory. There you go. It's not my theory, by the way. Oh, it's not your theory. Yeah, it's not my theory. It's just something. That it's These are things that I've you know, learned over the years. But that's the Fibonacci sequence of the Vitruvian Man. Um, that's what we just pulled up. And, uh, yeah. It's very interesting. So... Um, what it is, what this specifically, could you could you make this a little bit bigger, please? Um, so essentially what this is, it has to do with called Christ consciousness, okay? So, and don't worry, this is not me trying to promote any sort of denomination. This is not the goal. There is a specific goal in mind, so just bear with me and we'll get there. So, like we were talking about a minute ago, humans have specific states of mind that we have come from and we are going from. You know, we started when we have evidence that the Sumerian culture and the Aztecs and people of way, way before our time was were still modern and they were still ways there they had ways to innovate and they had ways to do things that we would never even think of. When you think of things like the pyramids, which fun fact, the pyramids are math so mathematically accurate they're almost they're pointing almost directly due north. They line up almost precisely with Orion's belt, which is 
insane whenever you think about the precision needed to construct something like that when with, with and what technology they exactly were believed with to the have tools, at least around that time in the tools with how heavy each individual stone itself is the uh, pure size of it oh uh, yeah with with it was prove, disproven recently the um method of how they moved the stones mm-hmm. It was disproven. They actually attempted it on a stone way, way not as large as the stones of the pyramid, and mm-hmm. it didn't work. Exactly. <laughs> so it was like, and there's they still pyramids don't know. everywhere. There's there's yeah. like what twelve of them, something like that. Some some. Oh, there's way more than that. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about just in Egypt? Yeah, specifically. Right. Oh. There's the three great pyramids of Giza, and then you have more in the surrounding areas. But like, um, so when you have things like that. And then you have things like Stonehenge. Nobody, mm. it's still mysterious about Stonehenge. You see that Stonehenge um, in, was it in Michigan underwater? No. It's like a sim, yeah, there's a similar structure that looks like a Stonehenge. Really? Oh, it was clickbait. Was it clickbait? Did was you watch it? the video? I did not watch the video. Was it serious? Oh, okay. That was clickbait. There, there, there is like, that was all LIDAR. And um, that was just like the light detection radar picking that up at the bottom. They, they, uh-huh. There is some things. They found like they found carvings of rocks that look like mammoths and that kind of stuff at the bottom of Michigan, but nothing that like is completely like Stonehenge. Nothing to the size at all. So like, gotcha. It's okay. not like there's a Stonehenge just sitting under Lake Michigan. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, That'd be interesting. Yeah, it would be. But like, this is this is what he pulled up. Look at this. They're only point zero six seven degrees counterclockwise from perfect cardinal alignment with north. Damn. That's so. Oh, you know what's wild? I saw this recently. So, will you do me one more solid, Dylan? Will you pull up just the the numerical speed of light? So, the numbers of speed of light for meters per second directly line up with the pyramids' um, latitude and longitude. Oh, really? Yeah. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's kilometers per second. So just to that times a thousand. So, um. And then you have, like, will you search something like the um, numerical speed of light in pyramids, pyramids of Giza um, coordinates? Um, the numbers of the speed of light match up with the coordinate. Like, it's not it's not 299 comma whatever, but the, the north is like 29.952. Like, it's very, very similar as far as the actual speed of light numbers in the Pyramid of Giza coordinates, which is wild. I'm just going to put it out there and be the, uh, the, the <laughs> person that... <laughs> skeptic. So that, yeah, the skeptic. <laughs> Be like, gosh. hey, it's just coincidence. Look at that. Oh my god. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Two nine nine seven nine two four are we, five. Are eight. we sure I'm gonna be the skeptic again again? Are we sure we just didn't copy those numbers? No, that's the this actual is, speed of we're light. We're looking at a picture here and it's that's the actual speed of light, yeah. physics major. Okay, yeah. that's crazy. Because it's we rounded up to three times ten to the eight, so that's that seems a little more accurate, but Wow. But yeah, like look at the the they two nine nine seven nine two four five eight. They both line meters up. per second. Yes, yeah, this exact second. same of the uh, northern latitude, latitude or longitude. Yes, either <laughs> <way>. yes, either <laughs> way. They're they're y- the northern coordinate. Wow, I knew a lot about the pyramids. I did not know that fact. Yeah, it's wild. Right? I thought I thought I saw there's some um, there's some numbers that like line up. They people were like taking numbers and putting it. And mm-hmm. like, oh wow, all these numbers line up. So, so that's when you why think it's about crazy. like, but it is kind of crazy. It is, it is crazy. <laughs> like, it how, is crazy. How, how is that possible? Like, what are the chances? I'm right? gonna build a pyramid right here. <laughs> well, it's gonna line thing. up with the speed of light. That's the thing is that <laughs> we again tying back to that when you have that much time on your hands to spend working and doing research and just put and dedicating your life to it, it you can get results like this. You can actually make things that are incredible. So I think, you know, it, it all ties back into like the social media thing and just we we spend our time. I'm guilty of it, too. I'm not trying to. I, yeah. I am completely guilty of it, too. I spend way too much time on my phone, like any device. I, every, I, every person is our age or below or yeah. even even high, you know, yeah. older spends way too much time on the phone. Yeah. Now, granted, so, so we I agree. do have incredible tools at our disposal right. that some people may not have had before us. But the like fact Candy Crush. Like Candy Crush. Oh, my that's goodness. That's the biggest scam in the world. That's what, that's what people of older than us, that's how they spend their time on their phones. <laughs> candy we crush. might actually learn things on our phones. Uh, 35 <laughs> and up, you're playing Candy Crush. Oh, my God. You just offended <laughs> half our audience. <laughs> hey, shout out to Candy Crush, the, the best freemium game out there. <laughs> 
Look, look, you can do whatever you want with your life. <laughs> if you want to be on Candy Crush or just sing, if you actually put your time in certain things, you might be able to get somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I agree. I already a got a job, things. boy. You got me. Pays more than yours. <laughs> I'm going right. to play Candy Crush if I want to. <laughs> All right. The millennials are killing the doorbell industry by texting, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay, so, but yeah. There's been, we talked about this on a previous episode where it was like, um, the amount of geniuses seems uh-huh. like there's less of them because I mean, we, we both, uh, agreed that like mo- most of us are on our phones all the time and mm-hmm. to really get genius level work, you have to spend an in-depth amount of time in the subject or field mm-hmm. on the edges of mastering the, the craft yes. of being on the edge of it to where you're doing new things that have never been done before. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of people our age master their crafts. Mm-hmm. They don't sit there with one thing for a real long time. And That's, that doesn't mean not being a Renaissance person and having multiple ideas, skills, yeah. but there's one thing you need to just maximize that because mm-hmm. you're actually, that's what the, the market also values in economics. Mm-hmm. So it's funny you say that Cody, because I um, was saying that when you were talking about learning a musical instrument, mm-hmm. what I've always told people when I said that you wanted to learn a musical instrument, the very first thing that you have to have, if you want to learn any musical instrument, is you have to have nothing else to do. Interesting. Because you will find anything else to do because it is not fun for those first three months that you were playing any musical instrument. I'll say I tried to learn guitar. It took me three weeks. And I just, it just, yeah. You got to have nothing. Learn. You got to be completely bored. Yeah. You got to have nothing else going on. Mm-hmm. Really? That's interesting. Is yeah. that how you learned? It is. Most of <laughs> and it really is. <laughs> oh, wow. Where did you, you start on? What instrument did you start on? Um, piano. Piano? Yeah, nice, okay. man. Very nice. I wanted but to learn how to play piano. To see if you stayed on piano, you could maximize even more how many songs you know and stuff like that. But I honestly, I haven't heard you on piano, but I think you're great with guitar. Yeah. So. You know, it takes ten, still, it takes 10,000 hours to master a craft. That's what they say. Um, it That's also been under speculation recently mm-hmm. because the 10,000 hour rule was uh, broadcasted. I can't remember what era. It was like 90s or 80s or even before that potentially. But that's it's technically 10,000 hours doing that thing, doing that thing, deliberate practice. You yes. can do 10,000 hours of something and completely suck at it. <laughs> that's 416 days of nonstop doing that. 416. Yeah. Wow. That no way, that's, that's a whole that's done. That's possible. A year and a half <laughs> of no sleep. Oh, is that, that no sleep? That's that's no, oh, that's okay. nothing but doing that. For, oh, okay. Never mind, never mind, never mind. 24 hours a day. Yeah, so apparently it's about. Um, if you do it about 10 hours a day, I think I did the math back then. Uh, it's like five or six years. Yeah. It's usually like 10 years though. Mm-hmm. If you really want to master one craft, exactly. kill it. So, well, it's 1250 sessions of eight hours. There you go. Hmm. So again, when it all, when it all ties back to it, when you have that time available to you to spend, to make, you know, discoveries like this, when you have time like Einstein, Whenever Einstein was doing his thing, the first few times he started doing things, he was rejected. He, you right. know, he had a first his first few proposals, his first few projects were rejected, and then he started coming up with more and more ideas and things like that. And then eventually, a hundred some odd years later, well, not hundred some odd, but close to a hundred years later, we're now proving his idea is correct. We're now proving his general theory of relativity with gravitational waves. We're now proving, you know, special theory of relativity, which actually I want to get into next. Um, Special theory of relativity, um, it, it pretty much states, this is something that I talk about quite frequently, um, pretty much the theory states, It first of all, no, yeah, that's general. So the theory states, the slower you move through space, the faster you move through time. The faster you move through space, the slower you move through time. So they're inversely proportional. So this has to do with a concept called time dilation. Now, it essentially states that, let's say, for example, you have a clock, right? Let's say right over there, we're... We have a book of our of our of our great friend, yes. and let's say the clock is there and it says twelve o'clock high noon, okay, and you start to move backwards or away from the clock at roughly the speed of light because again we you and I can never obtain the speed of light but roughly the speed of light let's say ninety percent speed of light which is still hauling, so <laughs> with that in mind as you start to move backwards you're just going to be going back and back and back and back and back and eventually. It's going to take a long time for you to recognize that it went from 12 o'clock to 12.01. 
Because to you, time is moving past you much slower because you're moving through space much faster. To you and I, time is going to pass as it passes. It, it passes 60 seconds in a minute. You just stole that from Einstein. I didn't steal it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm I'm just kidding, saying his theory. Saying, I'm just yeah, saying his he, theory. He was on a, uh, a railroad, or he talks about theoretically being on a railroad car and the same thing happening. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's a good way to explain it. But. Whenever you get the railroad car or my thing? No, no. He, Stephen like he Hawking was, was the railroad car. Was it the no no? Uh, I thought Albert Einstein was on a railroad car, or like he was like he stepped on the train and he's mm-hmm. looking at a clock, mm-hmm. like a clock tower, and mm-hmm. as he's moving away from it, the same. Yeah, he explains the same thing. Yeah, so as you move so. further away from it, faster to you, time is going by super slow because you're moving through space so quickly. Because when you think about it, when you literally think about it, when you're driving in a car or flying in a plane, you're transporting your body at upwards of sometimes 70 to 300 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Time, there you go. Um, this is time dilation on the International Space Station. Very nice. They are lagging at 0.007 seconds behind it for every six months. Nice. Can you look this up to confirm this? Apparently Scott Kelly is older than his uh, brother now because of that. Like a, by, well, yeah, by Milla, makes, Milla Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. We don't, we don't have to look that up. Yeah, yeah. Clearly right there. I think he's younger Is, is he younger? Brother. He'd be younger. He would because, be younger. Oh, sorry, he would he be younger. He experienced less time than his brother. Right, okay, okay, that makes more sense. He experienced what, point? He was one four seconds less time than his brother? Okay. Point zero one four. yeah. Yeah, so of seconds. Oh. Because he was up there for a year. Yeah. Wow, that's so, insane, huh? Yeah, it's point zero one four seconds. So people ask, they're like, can I live longer in space? No. Once you go up there, like you might have some sort of you know differences of your physical stature, but the, again, the expected human life expectancy is still about eighty years. Well, isn't it? Isn't it if you go further away? So, like, so like if we jump to the next star system, uh-huh. technically, those people are at a totally different time than us. Well, when you think of it relatively, because uh-huh. this is why it's the general or special theory of relativity, because time, as you and I know, is relative. What's currently what eight o'clock? 8.15, 8, almost 8.30 p.m. to you and I is not 8.30 to someone on the other side of the world. Time is relative. It's a human construct. We Time doesn't exist. We say it exists because we say it does. So when you think about it, yeah, if you're in a completely different star system, that time to you is going to be completely different. But the human life expectancy is roughly 80 years depending on your health and your genetics and your living condition. So roughly 80 years, give or take 10 years, depending on how you live. So if you were to go to the International Space Station or somewhere in space when you were 20 years old, you would still really only live till about 80, depending again on that considers a whole bunch of factors, how much food you have, how much oxygen, because space existence is just weird. It's probably less because space is so... Yeah, it's so difficult. Difficult to yeah, live in it's, and you, harsh. It, yeah, exactly. It's a very oh, harsh environment. I just had an idea. What's up? Um, so... I pulled up how fast the Earth is moving. Yeah. The Earth is moving, is moving at 1.3 million miles per hour. So if we went into a spacecraft and sat completely still mm-hmm. with no other factors, would we would probably live a lot, sh- a lot shorter, right? Because our time is moving faster for us on Earth. Yeah. So the thing but is... But wouldn't is you that fall into whichever orbit was closest? Let's just say that, that we're not... We're just like in, no, in nobody's orbit... And we're so just sitting completely like still, a, like a like a like a, a Lagrange <laughs> point, like where you don't where you don't move, you're just kind of there. Well, we would still be moving with the Earth, so gotcha. like we're so still you're be orbiting moving. the sun, but you're not, you know, you're not really. Orbiting. Let's say we're not orbiting anything; we're just sitting completely still. Are we still in our solar system? Yes. Let's okay. just say we. Well, went. technically, you would fall so, to the gravity of the sun, correct? Because the gravity uh, would pull yeah. you. It would, the gravitational pull of whatever direct whatever has the strongest gravitational pull. Okay, that's not pull, what I'm trying to say. Sun. But 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 if we're <laughs> okay, what I'm trying to All say right. is is that time dilation happens on Earth because we're already moving 1.3 million miles per to hour. To answer your direct question. That's a part of it, but it's not the same part. The big part about it is that you're right. There, it, we're re, we're revolving around the sun at that rate. However, the Earth rotates depending on where you are laterally. Um, if you're on the equator, sorry, I just said equator and pointed this way. If you're on the pole, you rotate a lot slower. Whereas if you're on the equator, you rotate. A I'm lot not talking faster. about rotation. I'm talking about how fast we're going. Yeah, through no. Space. And then if you were to be able to just be in space, not moving at all, which would be impossible. Impossible. I'm just saying, like, if you could. Just completely stay still. Completely stay yeah, still. We're, we're cutting out all the other factors. We're just saying if I were, we're sitting completely <laughs> so still. T- take away gravity and everything else. The point is, like, is, is, that, is that we already have a time dilation. <laughs> if if the International Space Station goes 17,500 miles an hour, where I have that 0.007 seconds uh-huh. of time dilation, the Earth is going 1.3 million miles per now. hour a second. So yep. that means that we already are experiencing a time dilation already 
than than everything else. Yes, okay. because to you, time would be completely different than the people on Earth. Because again, when you're going through space, it's its own frequency, its own rate. I mean, when you're rotating on the Earth, you experience a rotation once every 24 hours. Now, on Mercury, it spins, it rotates on its axis once every like 253 days. So depending on what your reference point is, yes, time dilation would be extreme because not only is that moving away from you at an immensely massive rate, those people still imagine that their day is 24 hours a day. Now, if you're standing completely still, just looking at the sun, you have no concept of time because you're not moving, you're not rotating, there's not really anything happening to you. But you so, had a clock, like literally. If you can a, measure time, what about if you had a watch? Yeah, you could measure time, and you would still live the same rate, depending again on the factors of of oxygen and food and all that. Kind all right, of let's stuff. put this uh, this example into effect. What about if we go to Mars one day uh -huh. and we're staying there for long periods of time? Okay, it's about two. It's about two Earth years that it rotates um, or it takes to go around the sun. Okay, so that's about that much time. Um, how would that affect their time? how long they live so would that be di any different really so the, the, the time that you live is almost completely dependent on the factors that you're experiencing from the location where you are so we live so we live the way we live on earth because we have almost perfect conditions to live we have the right amount of nitrogen in our air the right amount of oxygen the right amount of pressure all those things are fine and dandy when you go to another place that's not designed for us or that we have not evolved to or we're not, um, you know, we have not spent a lot of time on, those factors are going to start evolving your DNA. That's why Scott Kelly's DNA it, uh, mutated because he started to adapt to the environment he was exposed to. So to answer your direct question, it would depend mainly on how you lived. If you had a perfect um, encapsulated bubble that you lived in that had a steady 14.7 PSI that had fresh food to eat that had water and you had the necessary ingredients to survive for that extended duration of time you would still only live about 80 years unless you were to try and uh, adapt to the environment of Mars. Yeah because they also uh, they experience about double the amount of days it's like 40 something hours so their rotation the rate is about uh like 30 that. minutes longer than ours. Is it 30 or minutes? No, it's three hours. I'm sorry. So they rotate about hours. 27 hours. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 27 hours is their rotation rate. I thought it was even longer rate. than that. Mm -mm. Okay. Oh, their oh, Mars oh. rotation rate and Earth's rotation rate is very, very similar. That's interesting. Um, so um, when you think about it, it really just depends on the factors of where you're living in, your living conditions pretty much, your, your, your physical pressure, your oxygen and nitrogen levels, your food. Mm -hmm. All that kind of stuff. If they lived there for long enough, too, they would probably evolve. It depends on how much um, exposure to the environment. You'd gotcha. have to gradually start to, like, you, because on Mars, you could technically only live for, I think, two minutes. Because the thing is, is that Mars has a very thin atmosphere. Sorry. I mean, if if, if we terraformed it, if we started, like, yeah, if, if you, it got down along down that road, but, yeah. like, we couldn't increase the rotation speed or how long it takes to get around the sun. Right, exactly. You'd have to adjust the time zones. You would, yeah, because like they call works. Martian days souls. Right. So they don't, you know, they, it's a completely different time scale. Like yeah. one day for a Martian is 27 hours. Right. One year for a Martian is two Earth years. So it's just, it depends, like when you move to a new state, if you move from the East Coast to the West Coast, eventually you'll get used to that time zone. You'll get used to like, oh, hey, the sun's coming up. For me, what used to be 7 a.m. or 5 a.m., yeah, what now is 5 a.m. or what now is 7 a.m. used to be – you get the idea. Yeah. Time zones are weird. So, like, um, you get adjusted to the specific environment that you're in. You adapt to where you're at and all that kind of stuff. So it really – like I said, time to each individual person is is relative. So um, that, that gets into a huge discussion I want to get to you next. This is something you're going to like. Okay. So, spatially, it a lot of people, there are really, I don't want to say an infinite amount of spatial dimensions, but there are a large amount of spatial dimensions. So, if you have just a point, that's one dimension. If you have a point to a point in a straight line, that's length, that's two dimensions. And if you have X and Y, that's three dimensions, or X, Y, and Z, sorry. One point, one dimension. X and Y, two dimensions. X, Y, and Z, three dimensions. 
Now, the fourth dimension is something that we cannot physically comprehend with our brains. Yeah, no, you're already hurting because I know what you're going to talk about. You're going to talk about string theory. Uh, not necessarily string theory. Oh. Talking about time. I'm talking about more okay. about time. Um, <laughs> whereas a cube is a culmination of like eight squares. Yeah. A, I guess you, you can call you it. can pull that up if you pull that up in the I, I know think the, it's the a, main Wikipedia page. It looks like a cube inside of another I think it's cube a and it moves. Yeah, I think it's a tesseract. Yeah, maybe it's a tesseract. Or something. Um, but that's is, like the fourth dimension. Yeah, now. it's the fourth dimensional shape, which yeah. is just an assortment of cubes. Whereas a cube is an assortment of squares, a tesseract is an assortment of cubes. So it just it builds on itself. Now, here's the thing: when it comes to time, time in our universe, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's kind of the idea cool. behind it. Is that it's really hard to imagine it because our brains are not designed to understand what's happening. We only see things in three dimensions. We can't see, we can't, under, yeah, we, we can't, can't comprehend four we dimensions. Can't comprehend the fourth dimension. That's what they talk about. If you ever encountered a fourth dimensional being, potentially you would not be able to see it. You wouldn't know it. You wouldn't even know it. Like for example, when you look at something on a on a on a plane, you can see it's three-dimensional form because we have been we've been designed to see it unless it's something that's see-through you can typically not see through it you can see like length and distance um so you can imagine it and if you put something on like a shadow you can typically see its two-dimensional shape whereas in a fourth dimensional realm you can put a cube or you can put the test right on the wall and get a cube as like as your shadow on the wall so this ties into geometry and time these two are actually very interrelated um, there is a theory, again, this is theory, I have no way of proving this, this is just something that I subscribe to personally, mm. but this is a cool thought process, and I want you to mull this over. Mm. There's a theory that our universe, as it's shaped, is shaped like a Mobius strip. It's shaped curved, uh, which essentially time is curved. Time, space-time is curved. Um, there's a curvature to it. It's kind of like... What a Mobius strip is, is that if you start on one point and you walk straight, eventually you will walk all the way around the surface of the strip and end back up at the same point where you started from. It is, there's no top or bottom. It just is like all the same size. You can prove that with the current um, pictures of the universe though, can't you? Well, this is exactly in the Avengers when we, yeah, I, was, this is, I was talking about this, but this was exactly in the Avengers. Don't worry. I'm not going to get into time travel. Um, I promise. I'm not going to get into time that's travel. That's like what he was, the, what Tony Stark uh, mm -hmm. put on the table and, and this hologram and it's this Hey, no shape. spoilers. I'm not there so, yet. <laughs> are you serious? I'm about halfway through the Oh my the, all God, the I'm movies. so disappointed in you. Okay, I, I won't say what we're going to talk about then. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you totally go talk about it. But, uh, but so yeah. everything to do with the Avengers, just so you know. So, okay. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, when time is described as being in this specific shape, it's circular. It's, it, it's, it reoccurs. It happens all the time. There is no beginning or end. That kind of ties back into Big Bounce Theory. Uh, yeah, it almost looks like an optical illusion. Yeah. So and for those of our audio, audio, it this looks like, God, I can't even describe it. Yeah, it's it's a weird shape. It's like it's like yeah. a ribbon almost. I can imagine. I can explain like a ribbon. It looks like a ribbon, but it's not. But if you're on one surface, you would technically be on the same. That exact one right surface. there. Will you, will you open that red one? You'd keep going. Yeah, if you so walk it, straight all the way around that, you will walk around the entirety of the surface and end up back at the same point you started. Yep. Exactly same point. Well, it's like so. it's like a ribbon that you twisted. Yeah. It's like you cut one part, twisted it, and then glued it back together. Yeah. yeah. You could actually make that shape with a ribbon. Yeah. Now, here's what's cool. Here's here's something that – this is just to kind of blow your mind a little bit. This is just something I thought of recently that's really, really cool. Mm. Does the Mobius strip remind you of any sort of symbol at all? Oh, man. It kind of does. What kind of symbol does it, does it slightly remind you? I of? can't. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, is it a Vienna sausage? <laughs> Vienna sausage? No. <laughs> sausage. Does it? Uh, does it kind of remind you of like an infinity symbol almost? Yeah, like it. It, it kind of does. Like half of infinity. Yeah. Yeah. When you look or at if it, you from twist a specific it, if you angle. twist it. Yeah. So if you, if you have it elongated and you twist it, it looks like infinity. Yeah. Right. No way. <laughs> so my theory is that time is infinite. It's it just is. It always is. It always has been. It always will be. It just is. You're claiming that time is infinite. Yes, I'm claiming that is time no, is infinite. There's is no. Is that proven in physics? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. There's no, we're nowhere close to that that I can imagine. Oh really? Um, like I said, there's a lot of this is just theory, and there's even if we tried, it this is something that's so complex to try and prove. 
like yeah like how so how would you how would you prove the big bang if we are started at a certain point i can prove you the big bang the big bang to you i can i can prove to you um but on, the, on the aspect of like the time because for what 14.7 yeah billion years yeah but that means time started too during a big bang. here's the thing at least that's the theory our recorded time says. from the pre from our big bang there's no there's no there's nobody knows what happened before big bang that's what gets us back into big bounce that's my theory is that our big bang was the end of somebody else's universe so whenever the universe expands out eventually it'll reach a certain point to where it cannot expand anymore personally this is what i believe it can't expand anymore eventually gravity will start to win it'll start to bring everything back to closer to each other at an expanding rate and eventually we'll close back in on each other on a singularity point and eventually it'll expand back out close back in expand back out close back in so our recorded time from our big bang is 14.7 years 14 not 14.7 14. holy 7 cow we were alive during that 14.7 years old ladies and gentlemen so 14.7 billion years from recorded big bang now before big bang there's no telling how old the universe is that gets into particle physics quantum mechanics it gets into um inflaton fields did you ever like look that. into uh did you ever look into that star that might be older than the big bang that i was talking about i didn't i'm sorry i'm oh. i'm terribly sorry i, we need to I completely forgot about that honestly. no you're good that's fine i think it's very interesting but i uh, i mean the big bang theory is more m- more generally accepted amongst everybody anyway well, I mean, so. that ties back into Big Bounce. That if yeah, it, that's if, there's, true. if you can pick up remnants of a star before Big Bang, kind of proves the fact that, hey, there was something here before Big Bang, which kind of, to me personally, convinces me even more of Big Bounce, saying, hey, there was something there before that. There's obviously some sort of correlation between something being there before, then it's stopping, then there's something being there again, which is point of singularity and pointing back out. I also saw something really cool recently. I don't know how accurate this is, so don't hold me to this. Take this with a grain of salt. Again, this is just something that I've seen. Um, here, hang on, one second. Give me, give me thirty seconds. I'm gonna look this up really thirty fast. seconds because I just, I just 30, looked this up like twenty nine, twenty eight. I'm just kidding. That's why I'm, I'm here, Sean. What you, what you need, buddy? Yeah. There is, um, there is something that I saw recently, like super, super recently, like a couple of days ago at most. That it's right pull? here. It's right here. I found. Oh, I, just, yeah. I just found it. Okay. So. The mass of a black hole is directly related to its size. Okay? A bigger black hole will have more mass. The mass of our universe appears to be the exact amount needed to make a black hole the size of our universe. In other words, we all may live inside a black hole. Oh my God. Don't hurt me. Say, right say that again, please. <laughs> 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 okay. So the mass of a black hole is directly related to its size. A bigger black hole will have more mass. That just that that is that's, that's accurate. The mass of our universe appears to be the exact amount needed to make a black hole the size of our universe. In other words, we may live in a black hole. Oh my gosh! <laughs> it's wild, I mean, right? I mean, they, they just found recently a bigger black hole than they ever thought. Oh yeah, yeah. They, so what are the black traces. holes in our black hole? What well, can't they? Can't they? We don't know that much about black holes. Wait, there's not. There's we not much. We got a picture of one. We do have a picture. Yeah, of but one. finally, like all the black holes that I saw before were fake. Like they I, were didn't, simulated I didn't, images, I right? didn't, yeah, but I didn't realize that growing up. Like you I was like, how hard it is to actually black. comprehend what's happening around that because yeah. when you look right. at it, you see the accretion disk, and then you see something on the top and then the bottom. However, there's nothing on top on bottom. That mass is actually the accretion disk is just around the side. It's just going around it. But it's bending space time so much that the light itself is being curved to look like it's up and down. When in reality, it's just flat. So the mass itself Ow. is. I, I know this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is why I study what I study. <laughs> um, could you look up a black black hole accretion? This is why I almost studied what you study, and then I was like, wow, that hurts my I brain. Personally I personally recommend. I, I think I need to do it more, though. I personally it's recommend curious. that anybody and everybody gets involved with astronomy of some kind. Because when you start to study astronomy, you start to realize our place in the universe. You start to realize that we, among trillions and gazillions of other planetary bodies, we have a special place in our hearts and in our minds because nothing about us is special. We are a ordinary planet or, or um, revolving around an ordinary star that just so happened to get lucky enough to potentially have the night, the right combination of elements and pressure and all that to create life. So but isn't that luck? Ten away. 
uh, to a degree. I just said I was lucky. It's curious. This is why it I make you grateful. Up. It is. It does. Yeah. This is why I wake up and meditate and just kind of allow myself to be thankful for the fact that I'm allowed to be here and experience. I'm allowed to wake up. I'm allowed to go outside and smell the flowers. I'm outside to go outside and see color. Like, yeah. It's just one of those things. That uh, that reminds me of, well, going back a little bit, it reminds me of a physicist I was talking about that everybody should learn physics. Mm -hmm. Because what physics is, is it's literally pulling back the uh, veil, the circuit, yeah. the veil, the circuit board to what our reality exactly, right now yeah. is. And if you really understood it, you'll start looking at life in a different way. I've kind of started looking at life in a different way from studying it a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Because what physics is, physics itself is the study of observation. Yeah. Like, bare basic introductory physics is change in distance over time is velocity change in position over time is displacement when you think about it things like that when you just start breaking it down it's like yeah this seems like very basic stuff but these are the brick concrete things that you need to understand the more intriguing things the more complex things because when you think about it it changes your perspective it's not so much thinking that or it's not so much that like you need to know this for your life it's more of Problem solving. Physics, when I got into physics, it completely changed the way I solve problems. It made me recognize that, okay, there's a specific way of how to go about this. What do I know? What don't I know? What's the end goal? This is called this kind of stuff. So when you start to study these things, it changes your perspective of life. It changes your worldview. It changes everything that you thought you knew about yourself right. and takes you to a new environment. I think it shows you the basic foundations of what is going on here. Yeah. And I think it's important to understand that because, like, Growing up, you your concept of time is just like this number. Yeah. But then once you start forever. really understanding it, you're just like, whoa. Because a lot of people get so bogged down by physics because physics because they they they're too caught up in the difficulty of physics. Yeah. And yeah, at a point, physics can be difficult. But again, it depends on who you're learning it from. It depends. This gets into like public education and all this kind of stuff because teachers deserve to be paid. Um, whenever they are educating the future of our of our society, so yeah. Um. Whenever you get people that are energetic about it, when you get people that are interested in the subject, that are actually willing to communicate those interests to, to kids, the kids will grow up to begin to appreciate it more. And yeah. when you start to study, it just it just helps you understand more. But like, okay, so let me show you this really quick. That one right there. The one so we, pulled, pulled we pulled a uh, pi uh, bunch of pictures up of black yeah. holes or okay. at least simulated pictures. So that picture that you're seeing right there, that top and bottom, yeah, is not the top and the bottom of the black hole. There is no top, no bottom. That actually goes all the way around it. It's actually going circularly around. There is no... So why do we see it like that? Is just how the light bends? Yes, because the black hole has such a strong... So imagine it this way. Imagine what, what gravity is... What gravity is, is the bending of space-time. So when you have large objects, you have large masses, things like stars, planets, um, galaxies themselves, things like that. When you have large objects in space-time, what it is, it's putting a dent in space-time. And a black hole is a mass, it's an object that has mass, that is so dense and so tightly compacted. It's like if you were to take a ball of lead and just drop it, it makes a, makes a solid thud. Whereas if you take a, a uh, like a uh, uh, a cotton ball, it doesn't make that dent of a thud because it's not very dense. It's not, it's got a lot of air in it. That's the concept between density. Um, so it's so dense that the gravity is just so strong at that specific point that the object may be up here, but it's gravity that's influencing is all the way down here because it's so dense of an object. It's like almost that's why they call it a black hole because it's almost punching a hole through space time. It's so dense. So when you get something around it, first off, light, when it travels, it travels the easiest path. It's, it follows sometimes, if it's, if it's necessary, a curved path, if, especially if it's the easiest way to travel. So when you get too close to a black hole, first things first, nothing can escape a black hole, not even light going at its immense speed, especially when you get to a specific point called the um, event horizon. Once you get to the event horizon, it's pretty much game set, Matt. You're done. Donezo. You get what's called spaghetti -fi It's a real term. You get spaghettified, and you get literally like... I've, he I've heard of that so, before, and they, that's what they talk about in a lot of movies and this, things in general that you would get spaghettified. Yeah. But technically, it's still, in a way, all theory. Well, this is this is summing up what we know about reality yeah. as it is and how space-time works. Exactly. That's what would happen. Yeah. But if you actually... You know, some things we might not know if we do approach a black hole. You might not get spaghettified, but it maybe 
what we know yeah. what we know of you would get spaghetti fried. So the whole thing is that exactly that's the idea of spaghetti spaghettification. Um, <laughs> um, you just had to bring that picture up. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz why not? So the idea is that when light gets close to a black hole and it's interacting with that super intense dense gravity, it's going to start warping the light. It's going to start and to us, we can't comprehend what's going on because we just we see this image of this warped light that's being distorted when in reality, again, it's just there and it's just creating that material around it. But it's so it's so dense and so warped that it's going down and up to make it seem like it's just like this swirly pattern, but it's really, really not. We've looked at it with uh, different wavelengths of light and seen different things. Or it's pretty similar across the whole so wavelength of light. It's... First and foremost, the data that we have and the actual picture of the black hole that we have, um, first and foremost, I don't know what wavelength of light it was uh, captured in. I don't know if it was X-ray. I don't know if it was IR. I don't know if it was UV. I don't know if it was a combination of the few because that's where a lot of the astronomical photos come from is their, right, it's a few combinations. their combinations of multiple wavelength uh, like pictures. That. One thing about the uh, – an amazing thing about the black hole image uh-huh. was there was so much data – that they literally had to fly the data on planes. Mm-hmm. They 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 had to have physical hard drives of the data from like seven different locations where they were taking the photos, mm-hmm. and oh they gosh. had to get that data on planes and fly it to one point. It was an insane amount of data. They couldn't they couldn't just you know you know use satellites and and beam it to each other. That's so crazy. In, in a world where we think we can transfer all types of all, all all the information that we can and that we get through our cell phones and computers and internet and everything. Mm-hmm. And we had to fly it still. <laughs> it just shows you how much we really don't know. Exactly. You don't know what you don't know. That's the thing. Ah. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. It's just like so that nebula behind you. Yeah. That is not one frequency of light correct yeah right yeah um it's probably i'd have to say with its specific color um it looks like it's a combination of uv and a little bit of visible and um maybe a little bit of ir it doesn't seem very red but like maybe a little bit of maybe a little bit of purple so um so when when galaxies are imaged Typically, because a lot of times when we're looking at a galaxy or things like that, we can't typically see it. We can see probably the stars. Because it's just all light. Like, to us, it's just all light. Right? Yeah, we can see the stars. Like, we can see the stars twinkling or if we're in space. They don't twinkle, but... Um, Wait, up in the outer space, they don't twinkle? Yeah. You know I didn't know they, that. You know why they twinkle, right? Is it our atmosphere? Yeah. Oh. The light gets well, scattered well, well, from the atmosphere. The, earth, the planets don't twinkle. That's because they're not emitting light. They're okay. reflecting it. Okay. So the reflected light is significantly less than the emitted light. Um, so that's why it doesn't scatter as much. It's because it has somewhere to be reflected from. Because uh, when you have a when you have a light source like a star, it's emitting light in all directions. Uh, but when you have a, a planet that's in a very specific direction and angle, it's only reflecting it at a certain specific angle because it's not emitting any light. It just is there. So that's why it doesn't scatter as much um, because it's just – it's very direct rather than having millions of photons coming at us a second or for every few minutes, but, um, cause it takes eight minutes from the, from light to get from the sun to earth. Um, so rather than having those intense amount of photons being scattered, you only have like a few photons or less, uh, still a lot, but less than the star. Yeah. So when you consider that's, that was getting back into the, the imaging of, of, uh, of, of nebula and things like that. Cause when you look at it, the visible our eyes are not designed to see in the uv we're not designed to see in the ir this is actually something i talked about earlier in my class today um because it was interesting to go back to the to the mars thing eventually some of the evolutions that future humans might make is that on earth our atmosphere prevents things like x-rays gamma rays um uv ir it prevents those rays from penetrating the atmosphere the only real rays that hit the Earth are visible and radio, and that's really about it because they're, the, they're long enough to be able to penetrate through the atmosphere. Um, so when you think about it, Mars has a significantly less dense atmosphere. So those UV rays, those IR rays are hitting at a much higher frequency. They're actually hitting the planet. Right. So and stripping the atmosphere as we know it too. Yeah, yeah. That also had to do with its rotation rate and its magnetic field. That's mm-hmm. why it actually kind of lost its atmosphere. But um 
when you think about it, future future Martians, depending on how we live there, how long we live there, I know the the NASA mission's only going to be like four years, but if you were to live there for your the, re- the remainder of your lifetime, then you had children and they lived there for their lifetime and they had children and lived there for their lifetime, their eyes would start to evolve to adapt to what's most prevalent to them because a lot of times our star specifically our sun um emits frequency at about i want to say five thousand angstroms which is a, is a which is a frequency of or sorry which is a measure of wavelength um so it predominantly emits visible light as we see it from our eyes but when you have something that's interacting with uh, a new star with less uh, protective atmosphere your eyes might develop the ability to see in UV, might develop the ability to see in IR because those rays are getting to you. They're actually getting down to hit you in your retina before, you know, that way you can actually adapt to see things. And I know this is completely science fiction. This is not real, but like Predator and uh, Alien and things like oh that. Oh, my gosh. Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't UV and IR, doesn't that damage your retina, though? Or yeah. Like- it's 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 dangerous to your skin. But you could evolve. You could evolve to yes. If you spend that. enough because time there, does some animal do some animals? Yeah, um, are able to detect snakes. Them? See in IR, I think. Wow. So we might be able to do that. Yeah, if you spend enough time there, your eyes could potentially evolve oh to see God. in different frequencies. Well, like, of light. most like like generations. Yeah. yeah. Down the road. So. Uh, just so you guys know, we're at hour fifteen. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh. Yeah. What okay, else do you so want to talk about? There's a couple things. Um. Remember, you only you only have a you have a certain time limit. I, got I know you, you want to keep going. <laughs> we're gonna have you. We're gonna have Sean oh. on again because uh, he's down to talk about everything. Uh, everything. Okay. Everything. So I think I think. And I think the next time we're gonna have another special guest on who is very good at debating and also majors in physics. Nice. So uh, Dustin. Uh, oh dang! You know. <laughs> yeah, if you say majors in physics, I only know that I've only like one other physics major around here. So. Yeah. Um, probably, that'd be fun to have V two and uh, and he's really good at arguing, yeah. As well, yeah. We we've and and uh, I think it'll be a good combo. He would challenge the heck out of you. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be an interesting debate, physics debate on Rock City podcast. We we shall have. But you know what's wild is that getting back into like um, getting back into harmonics and vibration. Uh, I think I think it's crickets. When crickets get into large herds of their cricket kind, <laughs> they emit, you know, that chirp, chirp. They, they have those that specific sound that crickets make. Now, there is a recording somewhere. I, I don't have it with me. Um, maybe we can pull it up. There's a recording that if you take that audio sample and you slow it down to a specific um, frame rate per second, it's the most beautiful sound you've ever heard. It sounds like angelic singing. Really? It's wild. Oh, my God. If you just slow it down to a certain degree, like the frequency that they're putting out their sound at, it's just, it's just amazing. So are they putting out at a, like a faster rate or just a different Yeah, frequency? they're just putting out really quickly. Yeah. So they emit it at a certain frequency and a certain wavelength that we hear from. Wow. But if you just take that audio sample and you just slow it down a lot, um, it, it's one of the most amazing sounds you've ever heard. You can hear that. You can hear that through the... Uh this one. We're playing the audio right now of Cricket slowed down. They might be able to hear that through OBS, actually. I don't think so. We're going to go back through the episode. So we're listening to the Cricket uh, sound being slowed down, and it's it's kind of freaky, <laughs> but it is very harmon. How'd you say that word? Harmonic. This is good. <laughs> I think they can hear that, dude. I'm dead serious. Hold on. Oh, no. Okay, they can't hear that. So we just played. Yeah. Hang on. Let's see. You want to put it through, through the mic? I don't know if this is the same one or not. It probably is, because that sounds like it started off the same way. The one I played is Cricket Slowed Down 20 Times. Yeah, it's not that one. Cricket Slowed Down 20 Times. That is the same exact sound. Listen closely. It's so creepy. <laughs> All right, talk over it so okay. we don't get pulled off yeah. the air. Yeah, <laughs> got you. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is what crickets sound like when they're super slowed down. 
To me, that's that's creepy. Like it, it's it's yes, it's a it's amazing, but it's also pretty creepy. But do you hear that like that almost string like sound? Yeah. Like, that's not any. There's no other instruments added. Yeah, that is pretty <laughs> insane. <laughs> That's natural. Those are crickets. Do you think yeah. we could evolve eventually to be able to play like different music? Just well, they already do that with uh, what's it called? But with like just our mouths, or like just different parts of our body. So I think because just like that, you know. Yeah. Um. What was uh? What is that uh group that does uses? Or what are those acapella? Yeah. Acapella kind of does that in yeah. a way, which is pretty crazy. I want to know where where Sean was going with the crickets. Yeah, let's go back oh, with the crickets. Um, essentially, just kind of goes back to harmonics and goes back to yeah. sound wavelength because you know there is that's just kind of a cool thing to bring up when it comes to wavelength because like when you listen closely and you slow it down there is so many i think that ties back into life when you just slow things down enough to be able to appreciate what's going on you realize that there's a like a lot of beautiful things happening in life you realize that our sun is emitting light and heat and if just going outside just looking at the sky for a while like that that beautiful blue it's just sometimes it just hits and it's it's and here recently down here depending on where you're watching it in alabama um like my me specifically my backyard's still green like like we had we had a while where the grass was brown and all that kind of stuff but with with it being so mildly temperature it's mild temperature outside um and how much rain we've had it just it's starting to be green and just taking the time to appreciate the world that we live in because it's so mathematically like perfect to look at things because without such accuracy and without such precision things couldn't be as stable as they are what did you say was the mathematical chance of becoming a human being one in octillion chances one in octillion oh wait, wait to becoming a human being or for their potential to be life on earth because becoming a human being has to do with one uh, in 400 trillion probably sperm count that's okay that's yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah that's yeah. sperm count that's sperm count but life life the ability for life to exist is one octillion one in octillion. Yeah, because four hundred. So that's trillion? the Goldilocks zone. Yes. Yeah, so apparently, the sperm count, I guess, in biology wise, yeah. it's four, one in four hundred trillion. Yeah, because yeah. that's I can I can imagine that because there's there's a huge amount of like individual. Um, yeah, those guys are, they're floating around in there. So. <laughs> yeah, but imagine you are. I think I. I think we already talked about this. <laughs> so your chances... But you already were the one sperm that reached the egg out of trillions and trillions of other chances mm-hmm. that any of those other sperms could have reached the egg. Mm-hmm. Be grateful. Yeah. And now it's also, now we know, so one in got, octillion chance that the Earth is even possible. Not only that, you got your massive chance of just life happening. Wow. So take the time, appreciate the small things in life. Take the time to experience good friends good music good good entertainment you know don't don't go through your life and at the end of it all get to your deathbed and have any regrets that's that's the way i try to live my life as much as they I can. say the richest place in the world is the graveyard wow no that's a you know that's you can't take it with you man you can't take it with you it's just it is what it is you can't and all the ideas you ever had and what you were going to do and what you wanted to do mm-hmm. it's going to go to the grave if you if you don't do it exactly so take the time live your life don't Tr- don't try to make anyone else happy but yourself because at the end of the day you can't make everybody happy that's something i had to learn the hard way you can't make everybody happy so you're you making can, me happy well you're you're <laughs> you're an exception you're, <laughs> but at the end of the day like you make me smile every time i see you sean you well, too happy. dylan that's good yeah good thanks good that's good friends i appreciate <laughs> you but so like just at the end of the day if you can't if you can't say that you're making yourself happy that's just do something about it. Get yeah. happy. Yeah. You can change your environment, who you spend your time around. Yeah. You can uh, think of diff- different ways. Recently, I will say I was very unhappy recently, but mm-hmm. now I've actually started back to working yeah. out on meditation. Good, man. good. Meditation, actually. Very good, yeah. We were talking about the meditation practices yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, just spending a few minutes with yourself each and every day just yeah. to kind of see how things are, see how yeah. you are mentally, how you are physically, how you are emotionally and spiritually. And you spend that time with yourself, you get to know, have an intimate relationship with you. Yeah. Because, again, this is not meant to be dark. This is just purely statistical. You're born alone. You die alone. There's nobody else's. You, you, your experience thing is by yourself. Yeah. So now you might have friends and family around you to help that make more comfortable. But at the end of the day, your experiences are yours alone. So enjoy them. 
and make them yours. I'll say there's also a lot of external things that will affect you in your life. Mm -hmm. But really, it is your mental state and mind that you yeah. control. Take care of yourself. It's the only way you can control. And you got to watch out. It gets on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Habits are a biological thing. Mm -hmm. It happens. And we're not saying it's easy. It's not easy to be happy. Nope. It's not. Grind. It's going to take. Grind. <laughs> grind. It grind. Will your brain to what you need it mm -hmm. to be to be happy? The art of manifestation. Yeah. It's crazy stuff. Thing, physics to personal development, inspiration speeches, the way it goes, to crazy man. theories that might not actually <laughs> exist, or they do. That's what got me into physics, man, is just appreciating what we have and then wanting to learn more about what's here. You're exactly what that physicist told you to do. Pull yeah. back the, the electronic board to mm -hmm. this world and this dimension. Yep, there you go. What we're in. So, well, I think that's a good note to end on. Yeah, that's a good end. Yeah. Is there anything else? No, you're, you're cut off. Yeah, you got I no know, more time. I know, I know. I'm just kidding. I, was, I wasn't going to go into anything else. That's it for me. Bro. Cody <laughs> Mistake shirts. Malone. That's what we call him. <laughs> all right, all right. We really need to start. Let's Home Malone start. is not real. Home Malone is not real. Home Malone. Oh. You know, it's Post Malone is... Macaulay Culkin, okay, <laughs> Joe Burrow. Jesus Christ. Ho Malone. I'm not, Ho Malone. This, I'm not putting this as a blooper. <laughs> <laughs> totally put this as a blooper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, pass the whiskey. Okay. All right. Are we live? Um, we are live. We he said been. we've been Holy live. shit. All right. Let's do this. Let's get it. All right. Roxy, pack us. <laughs> <laughs> Pack animals. We're <laughs> alpaca. Racket City Wolf alpaca. Pack. <laughs> alpaca. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a damn politician. Uh, Hello, my name is Alpaca. <laughs> I'm running for mayor. It's a racket city now. <laughs> <laughs> we play lots of tennis and badminton. Okay. Alfalfa. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Stop. Okay.